I love my one terabyte Steam Deck. It's got plenty of space for everything from Steam games to emulation ROMs. But not everyone will want to open up their deck, nor spend that much on a one terabyte SSD. So what about using a micro SD card instead? They've come down a lot in price, to the point where a 512GB SD card is under £40, or in this case $40, for this Cybrant Rocket V30 512GB card. This is rated at V30 Video Class Speed, UHS Speed Class 3, and UHS-1, meaning it can read at least 100 megabytes per second and at least 30 megabytes per second of sustained writes. You'll find that other cards in these sorts of ratings can claim up to 150 megabytes per second in reads too, which is not bad from such a tiny Thing. Of course, that's nothing compared to an internal SSD. The one I fitted to my Steam Deck is the Keoxia BG4, a single chip Gen 3 NVMe SSD that according to the deck can offer around 2.3 gigabytes per second of sequential reads and 1.6 gigabytes per second of sequential writes. That is far from the fastest drive that you could stick in here, but I already had one to use and it's more than enough for the deck. Compare that to the micro SD card though, which hits just 91 megabytes per second reads, actually below its claimed performance, and 82 megabytes per second in writes. The real killer is actually a couple of rows down though, the random 4 kilobyte block size tests in particular. The SSD can offer 900 megabytes per second in reads and 400 megabytes per second in writes compared to just 21 megabytes per second reads and 5.5 megabytes per second in writes from the SD card. Even with a lower Q depth, the SSD offers 57 megabytes per second in reads and 200 megabytes per second in writes compared to 17 and 4.7 from the SD card. That is a considerable difference, but let's see how that translates into game loading times and even in-game performance. Now, I'll start with No Man's Sky, a game that normally takes an age to load anyway. In my testing, from loading my save file to the world loading in and my character being ready to move, on the SSD, that took 56 seconds. The micro SD card? Yeah, that was 69% slower at one minute and 35 seconds. That is a sizable disadvantage. Now I'm going to let these play out in real time so that you can see just how long that actually is, and I'll be back to show you the performance differences in a second. Now, of course, you generally only get that sort of downside on the initial load-in, so once you are loaded into the game, you should be all good, right? Well, because of the slow read speeds from the SD card, you might find that the game starts stuttering, especially when it's loading in new areas of the world or universe. In the short runabout that I did, there wasn't that much of a, a difference, which is great to see, but for longer sessions you might notice a little bit of a difference. Generally, once everything is loaded in, you shouldn't see that big of a difference, but there's no doubt that it is a worse overall experience, even if only slightly. Moving on to Cyberpunk, this one is much, much faster. The SD card is still 58% slower, although thanks to the loading time being much, much lower, at just 12 seconds for the SSD, 58% slower only adds 7 seconds for a total of 19 seconds. 
for the performance side of things, I ran the in-game benchmark and got some rather interesting results. The game is mostly capped at 30 FPS and both basically average to that, but when loading from the SD card, the minimum drops to just 20 FPS compared to 29 FPS from the SSD. That kind of load in jitter can be a bit of an annoyance, although normally it's not a gameplay ruining experience. Lastly, we have GTA 5, which is a much smaller percentage gap, just 22% slower this time. This is loading the story mode, and the SSD takes 27 seconds versus just 33 seconds from the SD card. Again, I'll let this run in real time so you can see the difference. Interestingly, again I ran the built-in benchmark, and while the performance generally remained the same, the loading times between each of the scenes meant that the SD card run took 25 seconds longer than the SSD test. Now, I've synced up the test as best as I can here, at least from the start, so that you can see how these run, and again I'll let them run fully through so you can see what's going on. Now while upgrading your SSD in your deck can be a bit of a pain, you do get a much better experience overall from it. It does depend on the game, some are going to suffer much more than others, but generally speaking you can expect your games of choice to sit somewhere in the range that we've seen here. If it isn't too IO heavy, then it might be more like GTA 5, where it's only a minor loading time increase, versus something like No Man's Sky, where you see a significant time increase and potential for stuttering from loading in new areas or textures. The good news is that adding a large, fast micro SD card is a great way to expand your deck storage, even for games. Things like emulation should work pretty well from the card, and really any non-IO heavy games, think 
indie games, platformers, that sort of thing, should see relatively little difference. As for this Sabrent card, it's definitely not a bad choice, although the fact that it couldn't hit its rated at least 100 megabytes per second in Reed's claim, at least in the Steam Deck, is a little concerning. There are plenty of options though, including from people like Samsung, who are actually the ones who manufacture the NAND flash themselves, so uh, you can check out those. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description if you're interested in checking those out. And that's kind of it. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button. You can also turn on the notification bell and check out plenty of other videos, including on the Steam Deck and the end cards if you fancy. If you have any suggestions or things that you want to see me test with the Steam Deck or maybe even test with micro SD card and SSD, do let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one. If you want to test response times or soon to be latency, you can check out osrtt.com or check out the rest of the links in the description for places like Overclock UK if you happen to be buying from there. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.